What's going on? Got somebody in the chat. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? We're going to wait till we get a few more people in here. All right, we got six people. What's going on, everybody? Happy Monday. Make sure y'all hitting that like button as y'all step into the chat. We gonna uh, get started whenever y'all ready. Y'all can go ahead and get started with the answer to the question. You know, I like to do questions. So if you got an answer for the question already in your opinion, then we can get started. I'd rather hear y'all opinion first so I don't um, persuade y'all to change it. Probably won't do that, but I, I want to make sure I hear y'all opinions first. Got eight people in the chat. What's going on, everybody? Happy Monday. Hope y'all week has started good. Monday, Monday. Man. Gage, what's happening? What's up? What's up? The Consumer Review. How's it going, man? Where does your trace element sub return pump? So you ask what? You ask where do I dose my trace element sump return pump? I, I put my trace elements inside the tank. Carl, what's happening? What's going on, bro? How you doing? Yeah, Gage, what's up? What's up? 808 Beast Playgrounds, what's going on? Shout out to Hawaii. I appreciate that, Gage. I really appreciate that. We got 15 people in the chat. We got five likes. Maybe we could get those other 10 added on. The topic of tonight, just a, you know, friendly debate. Really debate. Not really debate, but I want to hear y'all opinion on this. What do y'all think? Y'all think fresh water is better than salt water? Anybody that has both fresh and salt, which one you think is better? Which one do you find more joy and excitement from keeping? The fresh or the salt? Anybody. If you never had a salt water tank, you can still tell me fresh water because that's what you keep. If you only have salt water and you don't have fresh, you could say that as well. Just curious. Mike, Mike, what's happening? What's happening? Shout out to Grand Rapids, Michigan. What's going on with y'all? The Monte Co uh, Colony, finally catching you live. You definitely caught it tonight. Gage, dude, I am wanting to get into salt water. I have a 20-gallon tank. I'm thinking about turning it to a salt water. Do it. Do it, Gage. Don't even wait on it. I know you've been, I know you might be hesitant. Don't be hesitant. Get started. Let's go. We got Mr. H. I love fresh water because it's easier and cheaper. Easier, cheaper. Might be a bit cheaper. Might be a bit cheaper, but if you start off with like a 20 gallon or something like that, it's not that expensive. It's not that expensive. Donna Post, salt water. Okay. Any reason why? Any reason why you think the salt water is better? At a weight, I have both, and I like the salt water more, to be honest. I can respect that. Honestly, I kind of feel the same way as far as being able to keep certain fish. But um, it's, a lot, it's a lot more work. It's a lot more work. The Consumer Review, both are cool. It gives me variety. I have both. You got me into salt. I appreciate that. Got a 40 gallon two weeks later. Got the 110. Yeah. Yeah. Started off with this. Started off with the 40. Jumped to the 110. I like that. I like that. 
Hey, yo, yo, y'all, are y'all stepping into the chat? Make sure y'all hitting that like button. We got 22 people in the room. We got nine likes. I know we could go ahead and get that up to 22. Um, Michael Richardson says, I have a 25 Lagoon, but never have done a saltwater tank. It might be time. It might be time to start that salt. Definitely might be time. Mike G, I'm thinking about trying salt, three freshwater tanks. Go ahead, Mike. It's time to get to it. It's time to get to it. I just showed y'all how to set up that 20 gallon. Still running corals in there. Um, and I'll, I, need, I need to do an update. I'm dealing with a little bit of um, cyanoalgae in there. Cyanobacteria. So I got to deal with that. But for the most part, it's so easy. Like I could add fish right now. If I wasn't trying to do... Um, I wasn't trying to do coral. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have the algae problem, the uh, cyanobacteria problem, because I wouldn't have the lights on as much. When you have when you have corals, you definitely got to make sure you have the proper cycle with the light on. We got 25 people, 12 likes. Let's get those likes up. Let's get those likes up. You sitting there spectating. Uh, what else we got? Yay! Say I feel like I feel like probably was saying freshwater is easier to deal with than the freshwater. Is that what you're trying to say, Gage? You feel like you feel like fresh water is easier to deal with? Cody MTB channel. Salt water is good. Burns a hole in the wallet, but you get more colors with saltwater fish. I agree. That's the problem. That's the problem. You know, you definitely get way better selection of fish with the salt water, whether it's the eels, the, you know, Dory. I mean, you get these blue, beautiful fish. It's crazy. Donna Paul always have freshwater starter, saltwater watching. Thank you so much, Donna. I really appreciate that. So that's what I'm trying to tell you, Mike. You can definitely get started with the salt. Donna said that she watched the videos and that helped and encourage her and helped inspire her to get started with that salt. It's easy, bro. It's easy. All right, well, we got 808 Beast Playground Brackish is the best, though, very interesting fish. Tell me, 808 Beast, what fish do you consider very interesting as brackish? Mr. H, my next will be a brackish. Okay. Yeah, brackish is easy. 1.010 um, salinity level. You know, get the brackish water lion fish. You could get the brackish water um, snowflake eel. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Especially if you go, it's easy to go from salt to brackish. You know what I'm saying? It's just that, that medium. You know what I mean? Peter Gonzalez, I got fresh water, but I think salt water is better. The color of these fish and variety, in my opinion. Shout out to Chicago, and I definitely agree with you, Petey. I agree with you. Fresh water is easier, but you definitely get a better selection when it comes to salt water. Salt water has some amazing fish. And then if you start talking about adding a adding a coral in there, it looks like candy in the aquarium. I mean, it's it's insane. It's insane. Yeah, but I do have both, just like uh, Cody said. He got both, though. RB, what's happening with you? What's happening? How you doing tonight? Happy Monday, man. Hopefully your week has started off good. Matter of fact, I hope all of y'all week has started off good. I hope everybody feeling good today. I just spent like the last few hours doing water changes on all the aquariums in the, in the all-white fish room. I'm kind of beat. I was trying to get that video out to y'all. Um, it's a really long video, too. It's like 43 minutes um, when I picked up the horn shark. So it's a fish tour. I fed the saltwater tank before I added the um, the horn shark in there. Horn shark introduction. I got another surprise fish that's in that video. And then I got another cool ass fish that's also in the video that I didn't tell you all about. So it's, it will come out tomorrow. I meant to get it out today, but now it's kind of late in the day. And the video is not going to do good this late. So. You know, tomorrow I drop it. Michael Richardson, your saltwater setup was on point. I'm going to try it out in the lagoon, fam. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's do that, Mike. Let's do that. Let's do that. Definitely easy. Aloya Costa, what's happening? What's happening? I've had fresh water all my life, but I want to jump into the saltwater setup. What is the best size start for a beginner for saltwater? That's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear. Start off with the 20 gallon. Start off with the 20 gallon. If you don't mind starting off with the 40, you could do the 40. 
but I always recommend everybody start off with that 20 gallon. It's just so easy. I mean, with water changes, you could just change out 10 gallons of water every month. Good to go. Very easy. Uh, Fish Tank Frank, what's happening? What's going on? How you doing? How you doing? And I think I know what you meant, Gage. You have the fresh water. You said, nope, I meant the fresh water. It's easier to deal with than salt water. No, I, yeah, I know what you meant. Just wanted to confirm that. You on point. You on point. Colin says, I think the symb symbiotic relationships are cool in salt water as well. I agree. But, you know, fresh water, I don't want to I don't want to put down fresh water. I got started with the fresh water. I'm fresh water at heart. But after having salt water, I can't have just one or the other. There's certain fish, like I would never be able to give up the eels. The eels are like, I got seven eels. I got seven eels. I got two inside of my 225. I have four inside of the um, the 125. And then I got one inside of the 75 in the house. So I love eels. And then as far as the fresh water, I couldn't imagine not having an arowana. Uh, the, you know, Oscar fish are always a good, personable, exciting water dog type pet, wet pet. Regina, how you doing? How you doing? I hope your day is going well or your night. I hope your day went well. I hope your night is going well. Thank you for stopping through. It's always a pleasure to see you in the comments. Regina is one of my favorite. My mom's name was Regina. In case y'all didn't know, my mom's name was Regina. So I definitely love seeing your R level Regina in the building every time. And my mom passed shit. She passed in 98. Passed in 98. I will definitely let Carter and Aida know that you say hello. They'll be happy to hear that. Gage, you from Oregon. It sucks. Okay. <laughs> you right up, you right up the way from me. You right up the highway from me. Fish Tank, Frank, what up? You from Ventura County out in Cali? Yeah, yeah, man. We 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 a drive away. We a drive away, bro. Make sure y'all hitting that like button. We got at least 21 people. We could get though, we could get the likes up to 21. It ain't that hard. All right, we got Darth Raider. I like that name. I like that name. Do you have a video showing how you set up a brackish water tank? Actually, I do. Actually, I do. When I said when I bought the um, when I bought the freshwater freshwater line fish, it's a it's so crazy how they sell that under that name, the freshwater line fish. It's not freshwater. They have them in freshwater. It could be in freshwater for a little bit of time, but it's not going to live a long life being in freshwater. It has to be brackish. So when I got it. You know, I bought it under assumption. Freshwater immediately got home because I knew better. You know, I didn't mind having it being brackish. So I look it up, brackish 100%. It could even be a marine. It could even be in a full saltwater tank, right? So um, brought the salinity um, level up to 1.010. Good to go. So, um, yeah, um, I could do it again, though. I don't really have any other brackish fish in mind that I want to keep. I kind of was thinking about getting the... The Brack Freshwater uh, Snowflake Eel, I'm doing this quote air quotes because it's not really a freshwater snowflake eel. It's brackish to marine. And if you're thinking about a marine saw, uh, marine snowflake eel, that would be one of the ugly snowflake eels that go inside of a saltwater aquarium. So the best thing to do is have that in at least a brackish, brackish setup. So let me show you what that, um, let me show you what that, so with that, Freshwater snowflake eel look like. Watch, I'm gonna type it in as freshwater snowflake eel. This is crazy. Crazy, it's gonna pop up. Oh shit, they changing it so it's not popping up. Okay, good. Hold on, let me, hit, let me put in freshwater. All right, yeah. <laughs> So it pops up as a freshwater snowflake eel, Indian mud, moray, right there. They try to say that that's freshwater. That's brackish. That's brackish. So hopefully no one makes that mistake and keep it inside of freshwater. Yeah. So the first thing that I read right here, which is good, I'm glad somebody posted that 
Although very hardy and brackish and marine water, they are prone to a number of diseases in fresh water. It is also common for them to reject food and starve when you keep them in fresh water because they're not happy. You know what I mean? There's not there's, these fish that usually live in marine water settings, and then they'll go down to the to the fresher water so they get some of that brackish, you know, for different whether they're hunting, whether they're uh, mating, whatever the case may be. That's the reason why they are known to be in fresh water for a short period of time, but long term, brackish. Brackish, brackish, brackish. Hopefully, yeah, we get we got 20, we got 28 people in the building, 30 people in the building. We got 23 likes. Please make sure y'all hitting that like button as y'all step in. I appreciate all the support, all the comments, all the feedback. Let's let's get to these comments then. I don't want to leave anybody hanging. Colin Nicholas says, Have you ever thought about doing a saltwater pond? Yes, Colin. Yes, I have. Um not in the same sense of how I have the 800 gallon, but as far as like a big plywood aquarium type deal, yeah, I plan on plan on doing that. Fish tank Frank going to make my 40 gallon acrylic tank into salt water. Yes, let's do it. Let's do it, Frank. Let me know how we go. If you need any, you need any tips, don't hesitate to ask. I got you out, man. I'll do whatever I can to help you along on this road. And uh, make sure that you're successful. Gage, okay, you said you can't go. Gage says, okay, you said you can't go one or the other. What if you had to remove one from the hobby? Would you remove salt water or fresh water? <laughs> uh, why? Um, can't man you can't honestly i don't think you can i don't i i I don't even want to think that way i mean each of them is has different symbiotic relationships like people like the other guy said i feel like they both entertain bring joy bring relaxation bring peace serenity they both have their place in the hobby so happening to choose one over the other it's like saying do you want to have music or art in the world you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't, you can't pick one or the other. You know what I mean? And I feel like aquariums in general is like living art. So whether or not you have salt water, you you create that piece of art the way that you want it. You have the corals, you have the fish, all of that. You have the lighting, you have everything set up the way you want to set up. It's living art. That same regard goes for the freshwater with the plants, with the fish, with the lights, all of that. So I'm not picking music. I'm not picking art. I can't pick salt or fresh. That's why I say I have to have them both. I have them both. And I can never see myself not having both because there's certain fish that I just have to have. All right. 808 Beast. Archer fish are one of the, one of my most favorite brackish water fish can go in fresh water and salt water, but do best in brackish. You just educated me. I had no idea the archer fish was brackish at all. I thought they were full fresh. Never knew that. Never knew that. Okay. I appreciate that knowledge. Appreciate that until. Yes, Regina, you're absolutely right. Um, I've never met another Regina in person. I've never met another Regina. That's why when we've that's why immediately when I seen you in the comments years ago, like we just connected from the gate you know what i mean because it stuck it stuck out you know what i mean and i'm not talking about like regina hall I, there's actresses with the name but in person or this is pretty personal for me so i've never had i've never met another regina uh, mike g my two oscars were fighting all the time in my 125 had to separate the two assholes yeah um you could have added some other fish to them to that tank. If you would have added some more fish in that aquarium, kind of would have balanced it out a little bit. That would have been the best thing for you to do. RB, you about to start your salt water now? That's what I'm talking about. Glad to hear it. Let me know if you need any help. Let me know if you if there's any questions that you need. You know, I could do, um, ain't that much I could do basically online, but and we could definitely figure out a way that I could make this shit as smooth as possible for you. And we could chop, we could chop it up and figure that out. Only if you need it. That's why I do the videos. 
if it's enough in the content for you to work with, it's cool. But if you need a little bit more, I got you as best as I can. All right. Mr. H, got to get you a green screen so you can put. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Man, I got the best images behind me, man. I got the I got the bench press set back there, man. I don't have to have no images back there. I don't have to have no images back there, man. I'm in the office, man. It's all good. I'm going to go back there and hit a set on the bench press one time. You feel me? But no, nah, man, it's all good. If, uh, if I was really concerned about the background, I'd probably be inside the fish room. But, you know, switch it up. You know what I mean? You can see what the, you can see what the room look like. It's all good. Fresh, fresh tank. Frank got put an order in for a freshwater tiger eel. You sure that for, you sure that tiger eel is freshwater? You sure that's not brackish? You about to have me look it up, man. You about to have me look it up. Fish tank Frank. Freshwater tiger eel. Man, you better be fresh, man. I'm going to be on your ass if it's not fresh. Because you just said you ordered the fresh water. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. All right, first thing I looked up, saw the freshwater tiger eel, y'all. It say, um... A hardy adaptable, a hardy adaptable fish. It can tolerate fresh water to almost full strength marine conditions if acclimated correctly. So it ain't saying whether or not it's brackish. We gonna look it up, man. I want to help you out, man. Let's see. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, man. So just a quick little look up, you know, I'm not going to sit there and go into too much detail on it, trying to like really, you know, find out whether or not it has to be a certain one. But I'm going to let I'm let the I'm going to let everybody sit. This motherfucker look nice. Right. Predatory fence. 220. So. From what I gather, it definitely can. It says it definitely can live in both. Uh, so. Yeah, I mean, see, I'm gonna read what it say on predatory fins. It says it can live in both freshwater and saltwater. They are known as a true freshwater eel, so they don't need any salt at all, and can live its entire life in pure fresh water. Well, that's what I'm talking about. So I don't know, and that's a nice looking, that's a nice looking eel. One more time, that's a nice looking eel. I don't know why somebody would go and buy the freshwater, the freshwater snowflake eel. So that's a that's an excellent option for a freshwater eel right there. That's a that's a that's a beautiful freshwater eel. You on point, fish tank Frank. You on point. All right, all right. Fish tank Frank, fish is perfect. Everyone, everyone that doesn't know about aquariums that I know always think they have salt water. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, what we got? Rock the culture. What up? What up? How you doing? Can you add corals to a saltwater tank after a cycle or wait? Well, I just did it. Um, that's a good question. I just did it though, man. I um I just set up my 20 gallon just recently. I added corals five days later. So yeah, after your tank, after your tank is after your tank is cycled, you're gonna have to do a check, check all your parameters, make sure the parameters are adequate for corals. And then you can add corals into the tank. Darth Raider just got a green spotted puffer today, and I'm told they're brackish. They are not only sold as brackish, but I've seen those puffers inside of saltwater aquariums. I have my small ones in freshwater. But they can be in saltwater and brackish. So they're uh, one of those fish that are tolerant to a few different types of um, parameters. I can't tell you which one is the best way of keeping them. You know, uh, mine are doing great. They've been in that freshwater tank for some months, and they're doing fantastic. But like I said, I've seen them in the in the saltwater settings. Haven't seen them in the brackish water, but I have seen a YouTuber have them in a brackish water tank. So I believe all of those are possible. 
Car, what's happening with you? What's going on? What's going on? I'm doing good. I hope everything is well with you. Hope you had a good Monday. Back to the money Monday. All right. A little cost of how many or what kind of fish I can put in a 20 gallon saltwater tank or beginner coral. Um, you could put in that tank if you know you're gonna upgrade, you could really max it out. You could probably put like six fish in that tank. You could put start off with some Duncan coral, you could start off with some A can coral, some some GSP, which is green star pilot, almost bulletproof coral. You know what I mean? So you got some options. You got some options. Fish tank Frank, my Fahaka puffer pug is getting big. He's amazing. I'm sure he is. The Fahaka puffer is definitely a nice big ass puffer. They get big and the MBUs. Red, what's up, man? What's going on with you? How you doing? Well, I appreciate you stopping through. You said you uh, well, I set up the new tank, no content. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Good looking out. Thank you for stopping through. Uh, Michael Richardson, how was that exercise bike? You talking about that? Yes, all right there. They moved to the side. That one right there. I don't use it. I either use that. She loves it. She loves it. I, that was actually a um a sponsored sponsored um gift. So um yeah, you can't beat that when the price is free. You know what I mean? But she loves it. She loves it. I don't really use that though. I'll tell you one thing. It's definitely sturdy though. It's strong. That's a fact. Mr. H, not about what the room looks like. Looks like, bro. I was safer when you look up stuff. You don't have to use your phone. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Shit. I could use a phone. All right, fish tank. Frank, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, uh, you was on point, Mr. Feet the Fish. What's going on with you, bro? How you doing? I appreciate the love, man. Hope all is well with you. All right. Okay. Rock the culture. Good looking out. It's all good. More than just music. Ever think about getting a Moorish Idol? I have. I have. I actually had two small banner fish before when I moved here. And then obviously um, I lost those with about 95% of my other fish. But I do like the Morse Idol. I like the Morse Idol a lot. And I would consider getting one. I just got to make sure I have the right setup for it. Maybe when I set up that 125 in the house, when I swap out that 75, maybe I'll grab one. Yeah. 808 Beast. If you do more research, the freshwater Mori eels is brackish to marine. It's just like how they say the Bumblebee grouper can be fresh. Um... I'm telling you for, from from experience, man, that um, that freshwater snowflake eel is brackish. I don't care what they call in it. I don't care what they say about. You can keep it in freshwater for sure a short period of time, but you're going to shorten the lifespan on a lot of these fish, just like with the freshwater lionfish. If you put that freshwater lionfish in freshwater for an extended period of time, is going to die. So. I'm not saying all of them are like that, but I'm talking about those two. I didn't even know about the tiger, um, the freshwater tiger moray. But when I'm talking about the freshwater snowflake eel, that's actually brackish. Yeah, you can put it in there. They sell it in freshwater, all that shit. But it can't live in there for an extended period of time. So, you know, to each their own. If they want to take, they want to roll the dice with it and they want to just, you know, take a chance for whatever reason, that's on them. But I like to keep my fish the way they're supposed to be kept. I'm not going to chance it and be like, oh, you know, I can put it in here because they say that. If that tiger moray eel, if it says that it needs to be be brackish, I'm going to go brackish. I'm not going to put it in fresh. I'm not going to probably would go with salt if I wanted to, but I'm going to put it in what it's supposed to be in. That's just it. That's just how I do it. Mike G, I have three Amazon puffers in a Planet 55. The little dudes get lost in there. Going to get some other fish for the tank. Just not sure what fish to get. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to put in there with those guys. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what else you could put in there with them. 
Orange and Aquatic, what's going on with you? Hope everybody good. Hope you're doing good. Yeah, the family's doing great. They in there enjoying their time. I'm in here doing this live. But um, yeah, everybody's good. Craig Campbell, what's happening with you? Some places sell night gobies as full fresh water. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like they sell these fish as something just to try to get the sale. But in reality, you know. The fish is not what they are calling it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's so crazy that they still sell these freshwater lionfish as freshwater. You know what I mean? They still call them a freshwater lionfish. Some of the spots they got smart. They finally caught on, and now they're selling them as brackish. They write brackish on the tank, all of that stuff. But, you know, a lot of the times, man, they trying to get a sale. You know, somebody going, they're like, oh, freshwater lionfish, I want it. You know, freshwater snowflake eel, I want it. You know, and then you know, a lot of the time it's not enough information online. You know, um, even when I read the um, the description from Predatory Fans, hell, I mean, shit, they probably read that somewhere online. You know, I've seen some of the things that they wrote that literally pulled right offline from somewhere else. So, um, you know, it's somebody doing something sometimes the wrong way. They'll post the shit online, and then somebody just run with it. You know, so it's better to, you know, either experience it yourself, you know, or treat that shit like a quote for a job. You know, you get three different references. You know what I'm saying? Five different references before you just say, okay, this is what it is. I'm going to follow this, you know. But anyway, let me see. Let me see. Anthony, for sure. I'm going to definitely keep it 100. And I appreciate you. Appreciate that comment. No doubt. Eight oh eight, eight oh eight. B says, "I have I ever considered a Trimac cichlid pair? If I ever seen a Trimac, you'll see it in one of the videos. I have never, ever, 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 ever came across a Trimac. Small, big, nothing. Not in California, bro. Not in California. I hope one of these days I could come across one. I'd be thinking about buying one online, but I don't really be trusting these sites no more. The only place that I trust." is imperial tropicals and they don't really have the trimax um you know i've been telling big fish lad that he needs to send me one of his but you know other than that if i find one i'll definitely get one i don't know about a pair you know but i definitely would love to have some trimax or a trimax at least one car they have my senegal by shirt labeled as a dinosaur eel ridiculous ridiculous Man, car, I bought a um a purple dragon goby. Let me show you what I bought a dragon goby. They would say it was freshwater. I bought it. I didn't even know why it died. I had it in freshwater and it's brackish. They always do this shit. Let me show you what this dragon goby look like. This is a cool ass fish. And it says fresh and brackish waters. Man, nah, man. That damn, the damn thing almost disintegrated because it was sitting in fresh water. I mean, the skin was peeling. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me show you what that dragon goby looked like. I hope that's a good little image right there. Right there. The dragon goby. And as soon as you pull it up, it's talking about fresh water and brackish waters. Like, nah, man. Like, that's what I'm saying. You know, if it says it's brackish, it were mentioned marine or brackish. It's probably more on the brackish side. I don't, uh, that's just me. That's just me. It's so easy to keep your tank in a brackish setting. It's so easy to keep your tank in a marine setting. It just makes absolutely no sense to keep it in a setting that could potentially shorten the fish life um, lifespan. No sense whatsoever. RJ, you're absolutely right. Always do research. And a lot of the time, man, you might not want to just, but like I said, you don't want to believe the first source. You want to make sure that you can trust that source. Check a few different sources before you just, you know, just run with something if you're trying to learn something, you know. Mr. Feed the Fish, you say, uh, we got Trimax here, three to seven inches. I could purchase one and quarantine it and send it to you if you want to just let me know. Yeah, I'm going yeah, to hit you up. I'm going to hit you up, man. I need one. I need a Trimac, bro. I need a Trimac. Damn. Yeah, yeah, we on. 
We on. I'm going to hit you up for sure. 808 says, I got a pair of Trimax. Might be looking to rehome one pair. I'm your man. I'm your man. What size are they? What size are they, bro? Bro, I thread, I found one of those in the lake, in Lake Tahoe, when I was fishing last year. Oh yeah, you right out here, bro. Where you at? Where you where you live at, Darth Raider? You don't have to like tell me exactly where, but shit, what city you in? Rob, what's happening, man? How you doing? Happy Monday. RJ you said you learned your lesson the hard way. I learned my lesson the hard way too. And you said you caught the Kobe. Okay, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, you know, you're in Bakersfield? Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with Bakersfield a little bit. Yeah, I had some jobs down there a few years ago. Um, I was doing some Ulta jobs. Matter of fact, that's when I was doing the Verizon jobs. They did an Ulta job out there too, but I was doing some Verizon jobs in Bakersfield. Male about eight inches, female about five inches, still young. Yeah, that's a good pair. What you what you sell them? Or you just you when you say you about to rehome them, I mean you you about to donate them. We can make that happen, bro. We can make that happen. I'll take them for sure. Man, yeah, Trimax, yeah, Trimax are so nice. So nice. It's unfortunate they're not out here in uh, in Cali like that. And uh, you know, y'all know I go to so many different pet stores in Cali. I mean, I'm going two hours out the way way sometimes to go to a pet store you know because i know they usually have some good stuff i gotta go two and a half hours to go buy some corals from um from some from a place in san jose these dark thread says i also have a trimax tilapia hybrid i want to see what that look like i definitely would let us see what that look like saltwater fishing equipment what's going on yeah man yeah i got the horn shark yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. I was, I was reading on that. Don't let the water get over eighty-one degrees. I was reading on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The summer is definitely gonna be a little hard, but um, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty prepared for that. But yeah, man, I got it. You talked me into it, man. Uh, yeah, so excited, so excited. I'm gonna drop the video tomorrow when I was acclimating them. He was eating right out of the little the little container that he was acclimating in. Eight oh eight donate just cover shipping airport. The airport works best. It's all good. It's all good. We're gonna talk about this more for sure. I appreciate that. Core. Core brief photo. Check out Tropical Haven and Modesto. Nice prices. Um, I've been. Have I been to Tropical Haven? You know, it was I've been a one fish store in Modesto. If this is the one, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm not feeling the way they get out. Like it was it was definitely unpleasant. When I went down, let me see if this is the same one. Let me see if this is the same one. Tropical Heaven in Modesto. There we go. It's two different ones. Yeah, Haven. Tropical Haven. All right, let's see if that's the one. If it is, hell yeah. I must have just went on a bad day, man, because I'm telling you, yeah, this is the one. Woo! Yeah, I wasn't feeling them. When I went, all those tanks up there, they were all dark just like that. Um. Yeah, I mean the prices was low, but yeah, I was I wasn't impressed at all. Yeah, this is the spot. It was really only one fish that I wanted to buy, and it wasn't for sale. They said that they were holding for somebody who was on the top tank. They had a bunch of larger predator fish up there, and I was trying to buy one of those. And um, and like I said, they said the fish wasn't for sale, so I was a little disappointed. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah, saltwater fishing equipment, definitely a beautiful shark to keep. 
I keep getting booted with these dang ads. Not a fan. Not a fan, YouTube. Sorry. Sorry about that, Regina. Got to pay the bills. I don't know how often they hit me with the um with the ads. I definitely made it where it was balanced. Sorry that you keep getting booted. Hopefully it's not too uh too unpleasant for you. But yeah. Salt water. I feel like I'm I feel like when I made when I built that thousand gallon, I don't know. I've been thinking I need to do something a little bit bigger. Been thinking I need to do something bigger, nice bigger footprint. But it would take me reconfiguring, can doing a reconfiguration on a bunch of those aquariums in there. I'd have to move over to 240, the 125, and I would have to make room right where those trash can sumps are. Okay, okay, Regina. I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. So yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Anybody else got any, any opinion on whether or not they feel like the fresh water is better than the salt water? Is salt water better than the fresh water? Corey says, any suggestions on cycling the 20 gallon salt water? I followed your video. It's been one month. Still have ammonia with no stock in it. Does bacteria take longer than fresh water? If you followed, if you followed my uh my recommendations, you could have already added fish. I'm not quite sure why you have ammonia in there, being that you don't have any um, any fish in there, unless you're unless you're getting ammonia based off of the the little bacteria that was on the live rock or in the substrate or anything like that. But as your tank cycles and start doing what it does, you know I'm not. You don't have to have the reading for ammonia at zero. You don't. You could, if your tank is good, you can add some fish in. And over time, as your bacteria build up, you know, it's going to do what it do. It's going to do what it do. I told you, I would have added fish in my aquarium five days later. I would have added fish in the aquarium five days later. I wouldn't have waited. I added corals in my aquarium after five days. So you definitely don't have to wait. All right, all right. Jonathan, these salt water is better. Is there a reason why you feel that way? Do you have fresh water too, or you just think overall that salt water is better? Ryan Foster, I came from fresh, but been doing salt for the past three to four years. So do you still keep both, or you only have the salt water now? I feel like there's certain fish that make it hard for people to not keep fresh you know um if you like personable fish if you're one of the people that like the bigger personable fish flower horns oscars if you want the smaller ones you got the better fish if you want the monster fish you got the arowanas you have some catfish you know what i'm saying and it's kind of hard to you know it's kind of hard to disregard how how personal and exciting some of these fish some of these freshwater fish are to keep Donna Post says, buy your water. Yeah. All uh, right, Carl. What's going on, Carl? Hope all is good. You say you taught me how to set up my very first saltwater aquarium two years ago, and now I have four. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, Carl. That's what I'm talking about. You got four. We got the, about the same amount. Got about the same amount. It's, uh, something, it's something about it. It's something about it. You can't have one. It's like a cookie. You know what I'm saying? It's like a chocolate chip cookie. They be like, you got, you can get one. Can't have one. I need at least four of them, right? Same deal. Same deal. Mr. Feed the Fish, the only thing I hate about freshwater is the comparison of the color, fish colors. No freshwater fish, including African cichlids, can compare to the color of saltwater fish. Also, there's nothing like a reef. I agree with you. I agree with that 150%. Um, you know, it is no comparison with the colors. It don't matter how you could take the most beautiful freshwater fish. And if you take, it don't even have the most, it don't even have to be the most beautiful saltwater fish. You could put a you could put a five on the scale of a level of one to ten. 
in a 10 fresh water and the five salt water still gonna look better than the fresh. Like, man, the Mandarin Dragonette saltwater fish is not one of the best looking saltwater fish, but it's spectacular compared to any freshwater fish you, you could pull out, whether it's, you know, like I said, African cichlids are some of the most brilliantly colored freshwater fish, and they still can't even compare to the salt water. So I agree with that 100%. And then, like you said, the reef, you know, that that's just like candy. You know, you're seeing all the different colors all in the tank under that light. The, the coral's glowing. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree 100%. All right, that Cleveland and Fish fam. Good night. Good night, RJ. Thank you for stopping through. I really appreciate it. Definitely appreciate you coming through and contributing. And you're very welcome, Cord, Cord Berry Photo. All right. Ryan Foster. I have one. I have one freshwater tank I keep up because I've had a few different people give me their fish when they go out of the hobby. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at least you still got a fresh. At least you still, you know, still got the best of both worlds. Carl, it's 1130 on my end, brother. I got to get to bed now. Tell the wife and quarter. I said hello. Bust up. Good night, Carl. Appreciate you for stopping through. I will definitely let them know. And uh, you have a good night. It's about, it's 834 here. I'm probably about to get off in about 15 more minutes. Just wanted to stop through, you know, interact with y'all. Especially since I couldn't get that video out today. Right on saltwater. So far, we got 36 people in the room. We got 36 likes. So we uh we're doing real good. I appreciate you all for hitting that like button as y'all come in. I appreciate everybody for contributing to the conversation. And um, yeah. Let me see what we at. Where we at? Where we at? Make sure I went the light button until I started with a fresh in 92, then 94 and went salt water. But had got caught up loving sharks and rasses, got a library of books, info printed out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, um, I always wanted a shark. I've only had two sharks. The first shark I had was a coral cat shark, and I only had it for like a few weeks before I bought a, um, a nice, beautiful clown trigger, you know, and as soon as I put it inside the 225 gallon, ate out the eyes, shark died. So, yeah, now we got the horn shark. Now we got the horn shark, so it's nothing like it. I definitely cannot wait to see it grow, eat good. I cannot wait to see it inside of the next enclosure. And, uh, man, yeah, yeah. And my son, my son loves sharks. You know, he loves shark dogs. So, um, you know, in the video, he, he already lets it be known that he loved the shark that he just got. So. It's going to be good to see him interact with it as best as he can. Jonathan, he used to have all fresh water and kept all types of fish. Moved to salt water 20 years ago. Now five tanks from 600 gallon to 50 gallon. Yeah, man. What you got in that 600 gallon, man? Man, what you got in that 600? Yeah, that's a, that's a nice size aquarium. 600 gallons. That's a pretty penny, too. I love to have a shrimp tank, a better tank, and a community tank. Not much else. Yeah, easy peasy. Yep. I was thinking of starting a... Um, I was thinking about starting a shrimp tank. You know, I've been seeing these nice little cherry shrimps. Sometimes I go to the pet store, they have these little brilliant blue ones and yellow ones and multicolored ones. But then I'm like, what am I going to do when they just start, like, breeding? What am I going to do with all these shrimp? You know, I wouldn't feel right trying to, like, feed fish, to, you know, feed them with, uh, feeding them to the fish. But, yeah. You done with the hobby, Regina? You're not, you're not about to get back in it? I mean, I don't mind you living vicariously through me, but, you know, it's nothing like having your own aquarium that you just get to relax and just look at at the end of the day, watching the fish interact. You have your coffee, your water, your wine, whatever the case may be. You just, it's nothing like it. That's why I always tell people, I think the fish keeping hobby is the most rewarding hobby. Most rewarding hobby. 
everything that it's almost like it's almost like studying for a test and then acing your test. You know what I mean? Like you study about you study the fish, you study the environment, the setup, all of that, and you put it all together, and then you get graded when you see the fish interact and living comfortably and things like that. It's it's such a reward. I was wondering if you will get a mantis shrimp would be interesting seeing a video of you talking about them and showing one off. I do want to get a mantis shrimp. I do want to get a mantis shrimp. I've been talking about that for. I've been talking about that for a while now. I just got to find a tank for it. I need at least a 20 gallon. I do have some empty tanks. I got an empty 20. I got an empty 29. I got an empty 60 and an empty 40. I will probably use a 20 gallon for the mantis mm -hmm. shrimp. I just got to find a location, but I definitely want to get a mantis shrimp. All right. <laughs> Do it for the puffers, Regina. You did. That's right. <laughs> yeah, the pea puffers would be good inside of a little community. My 36 gallon raccoon butterfly and two other butterfly fish. The raccoon butterfly, raccoon butterfly. Okay, I can't picture that one. Yeah, yeah. The raccoon butterfly is uh, it's like it's like yellow. Yeah, I had one of those in my fox face rabbit fish. It was a bit territorial and stressed it out. Yep, that's the one. I uh, that's the one I had. The raccoon. Butterfly, such a beautiful fish, such a beautiful fish. Spend my days babysitting two pits and a chihuahua that tires the boss, that tries the best boss us all. Two pits, yeah, I know I know you get tired after those big ass dogs. Yeah, I always love pit bulls, I always love pit bulls. Yep. But yeah. You have a Pakistan butterfly? I don't even know what that one looks like. The Pakistan butterfly? Which one is that? Let me see. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those are nice looking ones, too. Yeah. That's the Pakistan butterfly, y'all. Yeah, you got a nice selection of fish, man. You got a nice selection of fish. Do you have do you have any eels or how do, how you feel about eels? Cuz I'm definitely a eel lover. We were talking about large fish last night and somebody said that they should probably ban the the giant more green moray eel. I hope that, and I hope that ever happens. I would love to have one. I know that it's insane to say that, but I would love to have a green moray eel. Y'all don't know what that one looked like. Let me show you. I know y'all probably know. I mean, everybody know what the green moray eel looks like. Let me show you that, though. <laughs> every time I see the photos, every time I see the photos, I'm like, man, what am I thinking? Like, why do I even want to have an eel that big? But it's just something, it's just something about the way they look. They just look so, so insane. But yeah, they get up to eight foot. They get up to eight foot. That's a big, that's a very big eel. I've never seen one in person. Never seen one at any of the pet stores. I mean, if I seen one, I probably would buy it. Yeah, they says they're common. Yeah. And the tank size. Come on now. It says... <laughs> The tank size for a moray eel is 30 gallons. You hear that? Saltwater fishing equipment. 
They said 30 gallons for the green moray. Hold on. We got to redo that. There we go. All right. All right. So um, realistically, they say you will need something about 500 gallons to 1,000 gallons um, to keep that green moray eel. Now, that sounds, a, that sounds a lot more like it. But that's what I was telling y'all earlier. Like, you know, it's another site right there that says the minimum tank size is 180 gallons. And then the one under it says 400 gallons. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you get misinformation a lot of the time when you look this stuff up. Dreamfish, Mandarin Gobi. But I heard they are very difficult to keep due to their diet. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The Mandarin Dragonette typically will starve. Um, I watch BR, BRS TV, Bulk Resupply. Um, they sell a lot of different equipment, you know, saltwater equipment and things like that. I heard them say that you want to have a tank that's set up for a year and a half. It's really not the time that you're worried about. It's about having a, a stable supply of copepods. That's typically their diet. You know, so all throughout the day, your Mandarin Dragonette or dra or Mandarin Gobi is going to be eating these copepods. So you want to make sure that you have a real good supply of that in your aquarium. Some people can train them to eat baby brine shrimp live, but it's not easy. It's not easy. A lot of the time, they'll starve to death. You know, I bought one, you know. I wasn't I wasn't aware of this, you know. It's when I first started uh, keeping saltwater fish seven years ago. I went and bought one because I'm like, oh, it looks good. You know, my tank is healthy, my my coral's doing good. I could buy one, you know. And I tried to get it to start eating like the frozen brine brine shrimp. It didn't work, and then it died. So yeah, they're they're very beautiful, but you want to make sure you have a stable supply of copepods in your aquarium. Ryan, what's the best way to dial in your protein skimmer? I recently switched to a sump and got my first one. It's either super wet or not skimming at all. Well, your sump should have the minimum level where your water needs to be. If that water is too high, it's going to be pumping in too much water. And if the water is too low, it's not going to work very well. So you want it to be perfect. You get what I'm saying? So whatever that water line is on your sump, you want it right there. You have that little cup, the little bubble cup. You don't want that underwater at all. You want that out of the water. Also, you should have the adjustment on top to where you could adjust, you know, the the how the um adjust how fast the water goes up into the cup. You don't want it to just constantly shoot up. You know what I'm saying? You want it to go into the cup naturally from the organics and things like that. So um I will worry about having that the water level perfect inside that sump, right where it needs to be, right? And then I would just adjust it accordingly. Um, you're not going to, you don't want to just see it constantly coming into the cup. You get what I mean? You want to see it bubble towards the top. Like it's bubbling, getting towards the top where the cup is, where it spill out, but not spilling out. You know what I mean? You want it to kind of like hover right there. And then naturally you'll see it doing what it's supposed to do. I could give you, I could make some shorts, show you some examples and everything. Saltwater fishing equipment, no way. Frankie Banta. I have an African side neck turtle male, about six inches and a 60 breeder. What fish can I put with him? 60 breeder, African side neck. Whatever you want to keep. My African side neck, I was able to keep with everything. All, you know. I was able to keep with everything. Mo, what's good with you? What's good with you, Mo? How you doing? The pear chromis species is my favorite. Man, I got to get you some of those Dovi Fest A Fry before I get rid of them. I got to get them to you. Pear chromis is my favorite as well. Yeah, 1,000 gallon of saltwater fishing equipment, 1,000 gallon for that green, for that green moray. Minimum tank size for five to ten snowflake eels. Would a 250 be enough? Five to ten snowflake eels. Well, I think snowflake eels get about two feet max. 
If you want 10, yeah, 250 should be enough. That's a lot of snowflake eels, but 250 should be enough. I mean, I have four eels in my 125. You know, let me tell you, let's, I mean, let me look it up right quick. Let me make sure that I'm accurate with the snowflake moray eel. It says minimum tank size, 50 gallons. Let's see their size. If I'm not mistaken, uh, 24 inches. Like I said, two foot. So yeah, you could definitely throw um, five to ten in a uh, in a two fifty. My six hundred gallon is a fish only puffers triggers lots of big angelfish tangs eels, three hundred gallon venomous fish lionfish stonefish. You got your stonefish, and I've been wanting to put my put my uh. When you say the stonefish, are you talking about like the bull route, the freshwater lionfish, the, the freshwater lionfish? Is that the kind of fish that you're talking about? If you are, I've been on the fence. I've been on the fence about putting stony inside of the uh, marine tank. I've been wanting to do that. The 180 is a girl tank, 150 gallon reef, 50 gallon frog fish tank. Man, I would love to see your setups, man. You got, you got, yeah, man. You got, you got, you got my kind of tanks. You got my kind of tanks. I like that. I like that. Mo, you say you're gonna try to do salt water, but you like fresh. Yeah, we on the same page, Mo. But we gonna, we gonna, we gonna get you that salt, man. We gonna, man. I'm trying to push you all the way into the salt water side, man. I'm trying to push you into the salt water side. Even if you only start with a twenty, just get started, man. Just get you a little twenty gallon salt water tank get you some corals cool little fish just to get your feet wet just to get your feet wet there's so many options with the salt water gotta have both salt water fish in the quick but i have a test a lot of eel the two foot zebra more wait two foot zebra eel my snowflake died i'm sorry to hear about your snowflake yeah the zebra is nice the zebra get about five foot really man they're like gentle giants, the zebra eel. Medina cichlids. Good, good evening to you. Oh, yeah. Ryan, not a problem. You're very welcome. Thanks for the advice. Anytime. You have a great night as well. I appreciate you, Court. <laughs> you are a lover, says sorry, saltwater fish. Yeah, the deep dimensions 250 is 36 inches deep, is why I think it could work. I definitely think it could work. I definitely think that could work. Oh, shoot, first time catching you. I've been wanting to do salt, salt tank since I subscribed here, Luke. Well, I appreciate you. Um, I appreciate you coming through. I'm glad you caught me tonight. You definitely should get started with the saltwater tank. Have you caught the series that I just did with the 20 gallon? That way it works with a 20, works with a 40, works with a 60. Hell, it works with a 125 gallon if you want to pay for um if you want to buy 125 gallons worth of salt, salt water. Yeah, man, it's time to get started. Let me know what you need, Luke. How many tanks? Medina Sickler says, how many tanks do I have up and running now? How is your Regini Vieja doing? I'm running four tanks for now, all South and Central American cichlids. Medina cichlids. So, yeah, you you uh, <laughs> you remember, you definitely remember that Regani. That was, that was almost like two years ago. Um, that, that fish has been killed. Um, my umbi killed that cichlid a long, long time ago. Um, and then my umbi got killed by my red Texas. So um, don't have those anymore. As far as how many tanks do I have up and running, I have 26 aquariums up and running. I have two ponds, the 800-gallon pond, the koi pond in the front yard, and then I got the little turtle enclosure. Guido loving the new saltwater videos, bringing up, bringing that nano reef back, just like the old vids in the apartment. 
I appreciate you for uh, for remembering that. You definitely one of the OGs. Not that many people are really OGs, so I appreciate you. Thank you for coming along and being part of this whole process with us. Definitely bringing that little Nano 20 back. And as you know, you know where I go from the 20 with the Nano, the 37 gallon. I'm putting back in the 37 gallon. Uh, but I got to figure out where to put my puffer fish. My puffer fish has been getting bullied by my blue line um, grouper. If I could put that grouper into the 225, then I could slide my ras and slide my um, puffer fish back in the 125, turn that 37 gallon back into a reef tank, and yeah, it'd be on point. Yeah. Mo say you're going to test the water real soon. Okay, okay. Missed the last live, but just watched the band fish. Man, it's all good, Mo. It's all good, Mo. I don't ever let anybody know when I'm going to put out the, you know, when I'm going to get live. You know, I didn't even expect to do a live tonight. I just got done doing my cleanings on all of those tanks inside the white fish room and was like, man, I didn't get a video out to y'all tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and get on this live, interact with y'all, conversate. And um, it's always a pleasure, man. I always enjoy getting, uh, you know, getting, getting live with y'all. It feels more um feels more real. You know what I'm saying? It's more of the here and now. I'm not looking at the comments, responding to the comments, waiting for the reply. It's like we at it right now. So, you know, it's it's more it's more personal. Luke, with so many tanks, have you ever popped a breaker? Been worried about that with everything on my 125. I have running off two. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, man, hey, we on the same page. Yeah, man, it happens a lot. It happens a lot, man. You just got to go out there to your panel, man, and reset that thing. If you're in the apartment, you got to go to the panel and reset that thing. It's not a big deal. I pop breakers all the damn time. I have it set up now to where I know what I got to unplug. Let me give you an example. Like in the all-white fish room, when I cut the lights on and all that, I got to cut off my dehumidifier. I can't have them both on at the same time. And now in the um in the other fish room, when I'm when I'm running my heater, you know, I gotta and I, I gotta unplug the um the dehumidifier, open up. Yeah, yeah, man. I got a I got a hundred old hundred amp panel. You know what I'm saying? And I was gonna upgrade it to a 200, but they said that's gonna be five bands to upgrade that to a 200 panel, uh, 200 amp panel. I'm not paying five thousand dollars to upgrade that panel, so I made it work. Uh Try to make sure that you're not daisy chaining um, power bar to power bar. That's a fire hazard. Also, make sure that your power strips have, you know, the little um, surge protection on it. So if anything happens, if it's surging power, it trips on that um, on that power strip first instead of going all the way to the panel. So there's things that you could do to make sure that you don't have any, you know, any mishaps. You know, worst case scenario would be you actually, you know causing a fire you know um you're your breaker tripping that's really not that bad but it, that was funny man that was definitely funny because i know i know that i know the struggle right there regina how do your koi do with california weather this year you know koi ponds koi they're doing great they're going they're doing great the issue i'm having though is a lot of algae um it's a lot of algae in that water column so my water's a bit green. I did a water change on it. It's a bit green. Uh, we're not getting enough sun to where I could actually get out there and do what I need to do. But as far as the cold, um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but koi are so tolerant and hardy that if the top of the water is frozen over, as long as the bottom isn't frozen, your koi can still live. You know what I mean? Ohio Fish Rescue, their water be frozen over at the top and they're, they still have their waterfall going and all of that. And so it'll only be one little hole where the water cascades down into the pond and their koi still live. You know what I mean? They are definitely uh, amazing animals. Amazing fish. All right, all right. Jonathan E. It's a real stonefish from Australia. Don't mess with lionfish. Lionfish are a little bigger than have stingray in there as well. On hand fed, no lie. Okay, okay. 
All right. The real stonefish. Yeah. Let me look that up. Let me look that up, Jonathan. Let me see. I'm curious. Australian stonefish. Oh, it almost looks like, yeah. Yeah, man. It almost looked like my bull route, man. It almost looked like my bull route. I don't know if yours look like that, but that's what my bull route looked like. Yeah, pretty close. You know, the bull route, the freshwater, the freshwater stonefish could go onto a marine tank too. But yeah, you got a, you got a nice one. You got a nice one though. The real deal, holy field. Mo say he scares you the first time. He thought you lost everything. <laughs> yeah. Medina Sickles, I'd like to support local barrier fish channels. Keep up the good work. I appreciate you. I definitely appreciate it. Mo said they can live in cold mines, froze over, and my goldfish live. Facts. Facts. They definitely could live in cold, very, very cold settings. Goldfish, koi. But anyway, I'm about 10 minutes over what I was going to do. So I appreciate you all for sliding through. I thank everybody for contributing to the, to the conversation. I appreciate all the love, all the likes, all that good stuff. We're going to be back at it tomorrow. Hopefully I'm not too tired, but shit, I was tired right now. We still got it in. So I'm going to catch y'all tomorrow. Y'all have a good night. Peace.